Thanks so much for finding the time to talk to me. I'm super interested in learning more about your story and about your unique background. So how about for starters, you just tell me a little bit about yourself in your own way, in your own words. Yeah, sure, sure. Yeah, Sandra, first of all, thank you very much for uh, inviting me to your show. It's an honor and privilege to be here. Yeah, so a little bit about myself. I am a double immigrant. I immigrated uh, from Beijing, China, first to Toronto, Canada when I was 12 years old. And, and then I moved again to the United States uh, when I was 18. I went to college, I studied physics. I liked it a lot, so much that I I decided to pursue a PhD in applied math at uh, MIT. When I was at MIT, I, I diversified a lot in terms of my own skill set and my own background. So I did a range of things, including a series of uh, AI healthcare projects with the Massachusetts General Hospital, which is a Harvard Medical School affiliated hospital, including many student leadership opportunities on the MIT Graduate Student Council, as well as early stage venture capital investment. Right now, I am in Palo Alto on the west coast of uh, the United States, uh, where I'm working for a venture capital fund called uh, Pair VC. So we are a seed stage investor that uh, invests in great founders. Our past investments include DoorDash, uh, Dropbox, Branch, Gusto, Garden Health, and, and many others that um, I'd be very happy to tell you more. I think briefly speaking, that's who I am, sort of a, a jack of all trade and with a special love for AI, healthcare, uh, as well as mental health for, for young professionals. I really want to understand better what drew you to AI and also what kind of projects you've been participating in. What's your background mm -hmm. there? Yeah, so I guess what initially uh, drew me to AI is just, uh, I've always been looking for ways to apply my mathematical skill to something concrete, something practical, right? Like math and, and physics can be great theoretical playground, but ultimately at one point I was searching for the real world applications and that's when I stumbled across AI. In terms of you know mathematical intricacy, I think it takes a combination of linear algebra, calculus, and the probability theory to really understand and uh, furnish the background of artificial intelligence and machine learning. So I think that's what initially drew me into the subject matter. So after the theoretical appeal, the breadth and the depth of AI application in different subject matter is also extremely appealing to me. And I guess what drew me especially to healthcare is the ability to make a big impact and the capability of you know, making patient level, precision level impact on people and on individual cells and proteins. For me, that is extremely fascinating. Speaking of my past work in the field, in my time with uh, Master and Hospital, I mostly focus on AI applications of uh, healthcare operations. So not so much on the therapeutics and diagnostic side, but rather on the operational management side. My past projects include a, an accurate prediction model for patient wait times to reduce congestions on the emergency uh, waiting floor, uh, using explainable AI to identify, explain, and reduce operational bottlenecks within a, a certain healthcare procedure, as well as AI model quality evaluation. So I know that while you were at MIT, you mentioned that also uh, right now that you were drawn to like more social activities. I think you've been advising the president of MIT. Can you tell me like where this come from? Specifically with respect to my advisory role to president of MIT, it was a student cabinet. It was called presidential advisory cabinet, where we have four undergrads and four graduate students meet the president uh, himself uh, every month to discuss anything that's on top of his mind and act as his sounding board. So we discuss anything and, and everything about the governance of the Institute, the internal and external relations between the institutes and uh, different interest groups and on also national groups um, and uh, strategies uh, for MIT's engagement with the rest of the world. We are an advisory council. We don't tell the president what to do, but really we, we are there to, for him to 
run anything by. That's the, the capacity in which I served as the advisor of the president. Um, on top of that, I've also been engaged in many student governance initiatives within the MIT Graduate Student Council, including uh, professional development, alumni relations, mental health for, for students, housing, childcare, uh, and the list goes on. But to answer your question as to what drew me there, I wanted to I wanted to make an impact. I think that's ultimately what I wanted my career to be. I wanted to make an impact, whether at a technical level or at the policy level slash governance level. As cheesy as it sounds, I, I want people to live a better life. I want uh, society to move upward and uh, every member of the society becomes you know, positive and contributing over having a better quality of life. Well, it doesn't sound cheesy at all for me. Yeah. <laughs> so I am curious, is it the same kind of set of values that made you turn into a venture capitalist to fuel the growth of impactful projects? I believe so. I believe so. And I think ultimately, I'm a community organizer by heart. I enjoy bringing community together, whether that's the AI community, the, the grass student community, or the entrepreneur community, right? And my position at uh, Pair is the director of Accelerator, where I serve as basically the head of the operations for our summer accelerator program. I make sure things happen. I make sure teams are making good progress and that they're talking to their uh, mentors on a regular basis. And these early stage founders have so much passion and are so driven to make an impact in the world. However, oftentimes they lack the tools and the know-how to do so. And this is exactly where an accelerator program can come in and teach them the way to move forward. And like I said, as, a, as someone who, who cares about the communities, I want to be there to help them through probably some of their most difficult times as they bootstrap from zero to one. From what I hear, uh, you are not particularly eager to draw from, from your uh, experience as an AI researcher um, in, in terms of the technology in your, in your current role. Can you tell me a bit about like, what, what this shift was like for you? Was it challenging in, in any way? Working as an AI researcher is great. You know, you, you solve very tough but interesting problems and, you know, th things work out at the end and it gives you great satisfaction. But ultimately, you're talking about, you know, lines of code for a very specific task. Right? And you're coming from the technical perspective. It doesn't really give me the kind of, you know, satisfaction that I was looking for. It doesn't make me feel like I'm making a, a big impact. Instead, I make this code work after, you know, 100 hours of debugging. And at that point, I was looking for something where I would be able to, you know, impact, say, 15 companies, not just the one of the many algorithms of one company, right? I want to be able to basically uh, spread and extend my impact. And that's number one. The, number, the second thing is I don't see myself doing one thing for the rest of my life. You know, I, I like doing many, many, many different things. And... And being a VC allows me to see companies in different fields, not just in AI, not just in healthcare, but in crypto, in, in consumer tech, and et cetera. So that's kind of like the second reason for my transition. When I first made the move, it, it was rather challenging to tell the story that a mathematician or an AI researcher wants to be an investor, wants to be you know, on, the, on the startup side, right? Because in a way, if you think about it, society, reads your story linearly, right? You, you are doing X, you must want to do X plus one. That you are a math PhD from MIT, oh, so pro you probably want to be a quantitative researcher or a data scientist, right? And, you know, which I, I had thought about but decided not to pursue that line of work for the reasons that I've stated before. So being able to tell that story, say, hey, yeah, yeah, it's true that I have a quantitative background, but I'm also good at, you know, X, Y, Z and community building, business development and, and things like that. And I've, uh, I've had a track record of doing these different areas. I think being able to tell that story and break oftentimes linearly developed the societal narrative, at least for me, was critical to my transition. Internal conflict between founders, not validating your hypotheses. We backed the Garden Health, which is AI liquid biopsy company that analyzes blood samples for cancer diagnosis. Don't ever become a founder just because it's a cool thing to do. 
it won't get too far.